Hello everyone, my name is Quentin at The Young Enthusiast and this is my 1998 Ford Mustang GT. Now, I've had this car for about two months now and man has it been a great car so far. I'm finally giving you guys the official review. So, the reason why I bought this car is because I wanted to get me a, another car to replace that Civic and that Maxima. I want my first V8 car. So, I was pretty much looking at two options. One was a SN95 generation Mustang GT, whether it be the first part or it be the new edge. And I really wanted a Chevrolet Corvette, the C4. Those were the two cars I was looking at in my price range. I ended up getting a 1998 SN95 GT. And I tell you the truth, this car has been bulletproof so far. Now I put about 500 miles on it so far. I know it ain't that much, but you know I pretty much drive about two miles to work every day, so it ain't gonna really climb up that many miles. But I have taken it to a whole bunch of other places too, like to uh, Hoover, Dave and Buster's, and all that. Even taking my uh, good drives over there, long drives I normally take during the weekends. And this car's been doing great. So far, the only thing I've replaced was the battery. They cost me about $130. I replaced the air filter. They cost me about $30. And that's pretty much it. This car is not costing me any mu that much money, <clears throat> money, actually. Now, when I first got it, when I first showed you guys the video of it, uh, it actually got a check engine light, like right after I got done filming that video. It was about the oxygen sensor, but now the check engine light went away. I started using premium gas in it and it actually started running a lot better. So let's go ahead and start driving. I need to go to Walmart. This car has 208,000 miles. And it actually does this well for 208,000. That is, that's really great. Now you can tell that this car was not owned by some punk kid who got this as his first car in high school. This car was well taken care of. The engine is clean. There's no sludge in it. The cooling is pretty good too, which I am going to do a cooling flush on it one day before the summer begins, which is already pretty warm right now, actually. It's like 72 degrees and it's February the 28th. It's not even uh, spring yet, it's just warm. This car is great though. I use this on a daily driver. And one of my favorite things about it is the radio system. This has the Mach 460 premium surround sound radio system. And man, that thing actually kicks up a lot of bass. It's the best radio system I've ever had in a car so far. Just imagine what sober for be like. And it's also got something that I'm not really used to yet. A car with a little bit of power. <laughs> I can actually keep up with most cars on the road, unlike with the Civic and without the, uh, unlike the uh, Miata. Uh, this is the first car that I've actually had with a little bit of power going towards the rear wheels. Now, I know the camera's shaking right now, but it's actually a pretty smooth ride. The reason why it's shaking is because the freaking mount mount's a little flimsy, to be honest with you. But, this car is actually the smoothest, most comfortable car I've ever had. Get so, but when I first got it, I was kind of skeptical about it. When I first got it, the air filter was super clogged up and the thing really didn't have any power at all. It actually felt like to me I would have been faster in it if I would have raced it back then. But once I found out that the air filter was pretty messed up, I replaced it. <clears throat> like it was bad. It was like a rat or a squirrel had gotten inside of it and left all this fluff and lint everywhere inside of it. So it was pretty much stopped up. Once I uh, replaced that air filter, this thing was a completely different car. And that was really the beginning of my love for this car. 
I plan on keeping this car for a long time, really. As long as I can, at least. Like, it was a big difference. Like, you know, if you're like me, you pretty much never had a car that pretty much had over 100 horsepower. Like, my first car was a Honda Accord CB7. They had 125 horsepower. Then the second working car that I ever had was a Honda Del Sol. They had a D16 Y7. That's about 100 horsepower. No, I didn't have that car for long, though. And then I got that Integra, which you guys remember. That car was a piece of crap because the transmission was fuck messed up on it. And even then, it had a B20B. So that's about 120 horsepower right there. <laughs> and then I got the Miata. That car had... That car has 116 horsepower, it's 1.6. So pretty much go up to 225 horsepower and almost 300 foot-pounds of torque. That's a really big jump compared to what I'm used to. Especially a car that actually doesn't weigh that much. This car weighs 3,200 pounds. Now tell me what V8 car weighs 3,200 pounds now? None. <laughs> I think the lightest V8 car now from America, I think it's the Mustang. I mean, I think it's the uh, Corvette, the base model Corvette. And even then, that still weighs a couple hundred more pounds than this does. Though it is a lot more powerful. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be as reliable. This car has a 4.6 liter modular V8. And it makes 225 horsepower, 290 foot pounds of torque, which really isn't much compared to now. But that was pretty much the most powerful Mustangs I've gotten, really, since the 80s. Since they uh, choked down emissions and all that. This is really when the Mustangs started to go back and become actually more powerful than normal cars, really. Hell, even the new Edge, the one a year after this came with 260 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. Though there is a couple of mods I can do to this thing and it'll actually make more power than the uh, new Edge Mustang. If I put PI heads in this thing and a cam in it, it'll be making close to 300 horsepower, which I might do one day. I don't know. I didn't really buy this car for speed. I bought it because I wanted something a little bit more comfortable to drive and something with a little bit more power. I really wanted to see what an American sports car would be like. Because I've never owned anything American before I buy this. And it's really fitting since I work at the Ford dealership. <laughs> Man. Oh, and thank you guys for watching that uh, super clean video. I'm actually surprised you guys made as many views as it did. The people who uh, gave me the cleaner actually was uh, very happy and very impressed by the video. Back on with this Mustang. This thing actually launches pretty well. Yeah, it does burn out still. Push you to the back seat when you back to it. And boy, is this thing kind of tricky when it's raining. Like, the brakes suck on this thing. This thing has regular brakes. I might upgrade those too. <laughs> but it, the brakes really do suck. And it really sucks even worse whenever it's raining. It's easy to lock up these brakes when it's raining. Especially with cars powerful as this. And it's kind of heavy compared to the cars I'm used to driving. Yeah, the bad, the uh, brakes are going to pretty much be bad on this. And it's also kind of trippy, uh, tricky too to drive without spinning out. Well, at least at first it was when I first got it. it dude, this thing is very fun when it's raining. <laughs> Man. So this thing has a 4.6 liter V8, as I was saying before. But, you know, gas actually isn't as bad as I thought it'd be. I found myself filling this up about once every two weeks, which is a good thing because I do use premium gas in this thing. And as you guys can tell, gas prices have gone up. Well, guys, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this little review of my Ford Mustang GT. This is my first American car, and I pretty much surprised everybody that knows me in real life when I first got it. I paid $2,900 for it. And I'll tell you the truth, it's been a good $2,900 spent. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you are ready for more content on this video, on this vehicle. I do plan on doing a lot more to it than what I've done so far. My next thing I might do to it would probably be a new exhaust on it. it it's a little quiet, but, you know, at least I can still hear the engine. Well, I hope you guys like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more content on both my vehicles. <clears throat> and even my future vehicle I plan on getting in a couple of months. I'll see you guys next time.